What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another awesome motor vlog. Today is an exciting day. It's a little nerve-wracking for me because I've never done this before. But today we are installing a new valve cover on the M4. And so here it is. Gaskets all included. And I've uh, got the PCV valve mounted to the top, which is the reason why I am actually doing this install is because the PCV valve um, in my M4 which is built into the top of the valve cover had failed and when that fails it can fail in the open or the closed position uh, in my case it, it failed in the closed position causing excess pressure to be built up into the engine and so uh, I'll play some sound clips here so you can hear kind of what that sounds like when you do have a PCV valve issue They say as a check to make sure that it is the PCV valve, you undo the oil cap on the top of the engine and it relieves some of the pressure from the engine. And if the sound goes away, then it's PCV valve. So let's try that out. As you can hear, that did it. Uh, it may be slightly different depending on the vehicle, but I looked around on the forums and I found a ton of people with the same issue that I had. And this was a kind of a strange solution because I, I just didn't know what was happening. Uh, it was this loud squeaking noise, it almost sounds like a, a belt. And essentially what happens is when the PCV valve fails, you get extra pressure build up in the engine because that valve can no longer regulate pressure. Uh, so essentially what happens is the pressure builds up and it has to find somewhere to go and so a lot of times it leaks out in different areas. Uh, I think in my case it may have been in the rear main seal area. I hope I didn't damage that. I haven't driven the car with the issue for a while. Once I started hearing it I stopped driving it and I've been trying to figure out through reading the forums. So uh, to the people in the Bimmer Post forums, thank you because a lot of people have posted showing the symptoms and they match exactly what I had and a lot of the people who have had this issue have gone to the dealerships because they were under warranty. Unfortunately I'm not under warranty and I know plenty of you are probably starting to get into this case with these F80 chassis uh, M3, M4s so this is hopefully uh, the first tutorial on like a DIY at home for the valve cover uh, install. Unfortunately I, I couldn't find any videos with people installing this. So it's going to be a first time try for me and you are going to get to go along for the ride so hopefully we can do this and solve the issue. Um, I didn't want to go cutting the valve cover up. I've seen some guys doing that online. I just don't want to mess with that. I just wanted to, you know, it's a little bit more expensive. It's like $600 for this valve cover but I just wanted to go ahead and replace it because uh, the car is at like 60,000 miles. I figured just do the whole thing while I'm at it. Uh, and while I'm in there, I decided uh, to go with the new spark plugs since I already have the spark plugs out. Might as well throw some new ones in. Uh, these are the NGK Lazier Iridiums. Uh, here's the part number. There we go. That is the part number there. Uh, so these Laser Iridiums are recommended by Boot Mode. Uh, and I have the Boot Mode flash tune on the vehicle right now. So I thought, well, I might as well switch these up to the recommended spark plugs that they suggest uh, for running their tunes so while we're in there we'll do that we'll gap these I'll put the link below for not only the spark plugs but also the boot modes recommended gapping for these uh, when we get to it I'll reiterate that but uh, for now I think what we need to do is just start taking off uh, parts of the engine and get started with this uh, we're gonna be taking off our carbon fiber strut brace taking off all the plastic paneling up here 
And also this, uh, there's a big strut bar that goes off. It's a big uh, aluminum piece that extends all the way across and over to here. And after that, we'll kind of pull off the engine cover, remove the charge pipes, uh, and see what kind of access we have from there. I don't quite know exactly uh, what kind of access we'll have if we can continue uh, to change the valve cover out from there. But I'm going to start with that to begin with. And if we need to, we can move the uh, top mount intercooler up off to the side if we need a little bit more access. But let's just go ahead and get started and we'll start taking all this stuff off and we'll come back once we get everything off and we have access to the top of the uh, valve cover here. So next, I think I want to go through and take out, there's some bolts here, uh, they look like 10 millimeters. I'm hoping that will pull up this entire plastic piece here, which will give us access to be able to pull the full valve cover up and out without having anything uh, rubbing. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. <laughs> So I just pulled that piece off, get that hose kind of out of the way. So this is a connector here, get that kind of up out of the way. All right, so next I see there's a T25 Torx on top here, and I'm just going to go ahead and remove that. That looks to be holding this entire wiring assembly for all the injectors to the top of the valve cover. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove that since it's right here in front of me. Alright, so now that we have that pulled up, next I noticed there's a, a bolt up here that kind of holds things on. There we go. That essentially just holds down some of these harnesses. So, like I said, go back over to your valve cover, your new one, and put these in the same spot where you just pulled it off of. And then it looks like there's one more here. Be able to undo that. So what those do is they hold these wires into place but then the ball actually helps hold the top engine cover down in the place it needs to be. Alright so next what I think I'd like to do had a little cut on my hand here so I need to kinda wrap this up so I don't get it any worse than it is. What I would like to do is I'd like to pull off this whole cable uh, harness assembly here and to do that we need to undo these connectors here and you'll take note that the left side connectors are wrapped in black on each of these so that'll help kind of keep you know everything back the way it was supposed to go uh, so you can make sure that you have all those connectors back in the right way so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just lift up on these coil packs here I wanna undo the the cables here, the connectors on each coil pack. Um, there's six of them because it's a six cylinder engine so just kinda flip up the that little lever there and it pulls the
connector free. All right. So now that we have each of those undone, there's essentially these ground screws and there's one ground per each pair of cylinders. So there's a total of three of them. I'm going to undo those and then there's also little connectors here. Kind of worried to pull it too hard. I think if you maybe can release those with a screwdriver, it comes apart here. Okay. Yeah, so you can get in there. Just kind of wedge a screwdriver under the side. All right. So we got all six of those out. Now we just need to do that. Undo this ground bolt. Alrighty, so now this should, there we go, comes apart pretty freely there. Would be nice to be able to feed this through a little bit better. Looks like we can still achieve that. So I'm just going to feed that up through there. So this was kind of draped in around the back here. Just kind of pull that up. Put that off to the side. Alright, so in order to get these fuel rails off, we're going to need to use a 14 millimeter crescent wrench. Uh, we're going to use a rag to get up in there. First I want to take out these coral packs and uh, just kind of going to pull up from here and they just kind of pop right out. Alright, so now that we got the coil packs out, we have easy access to the fuel rails here. Now this is a, a high pressure fuel rail system, so there's going to be fuel that comes out of here. So what people recommend doing is you get the wrench on there and what you do is you put a rag around it and we'll do this for all six of the individual fuel rails that go to each cylinder or into each injector Alright, so next what we need to do is we need to unmount this entire fuel rail here. Uh, now to do so, there are a couple of bolts holding it on that go underneath this top mount intercooler. Uh, I'd like to pull this up so that we can get access to those, but I don't want to have to drain the coolant to do so. So my plan here is to uh, undo and I'll move this over a little bit. My plan is to undo this side of the charge pipe and see if I can lift this up enough to gain access here. I'm just going to kind of wiggle gently because I don't want to break any of these coolant lines and have a big coolant mess spilled out all over the place here. So, all right, so. I was able to wiggle enough here. I put a carpet up on the engine base area here where there's a lot of sharp metal that kind of gives pressure points so I could kind of like climb on in here. And I was able to climb up and I was able to bust this thing loose. So now just got to be careful just because there's these coolant lines here. So I'm just going to take a block of wood here, try to wedge this thing up under here, have much better access in here to get these bolts. Still going to be a little bit tricky to access, but There's some fuel leaking down in there. It's OK. 
kind of tilt upwards maybe as you pull it out. But I'm just going to unplug and pull this whole thing out. And oh, it's leaking feel everywhere. Uh, so just kind of lay this off to the side. And I think maybe it's best to right now before they take this off is to uh, undo any of these metal clips here and we'll transfer all the metal clips directly over to the new valve cover at this point we've transferred all of the clips over to the new valve cover uh, the only thing we will need to transfer over is this oil cap I'm not going to do that right now uh, the next thing that we want to do is we're just going to want to go ahead and start taking off all of these E10 bolts. Uh, they're all over the end, all over the valve cover. They're at every place I can potentially see right now where they're at. So they're all over the place. We got to go through and get those taken out. Prior to doing that, uh, you want to take this off up here. I think this is like a a vacuum control. I'm not quite sure what this is, but regardless, you need to take that off. And that is actually an E6. So start there and start taking that off. Every time I see you. So right there I can feel it's still engaging on top of the engine block and then there we go now it's loose very easy to tell so you'll definitely need one of these swivel uh, adapters for your socket to be able to get way back in here uh, it was rather painful to get down in there and try to undo this but I was able to get it um, with this adapter to swivel kind of at an angle in there and it worked really well so next I believe we have all these screws or all these bolts taken out to the point where they shouldn't be engaging to the top of the engine block uh, so but there is a, a gasket holding this on so it's probably gonna be a little tight so we're gonna have to kind of like put some force into this to kind of budge it loose um, but you got to be careful and make sure you're not damaging anything here and also make sure there isn't a screw that's preventing it from being pulled up because you don't want to damage anything so I'm gonna just go ahead and start kinda pulling in different spots try to break this thing loose and we'll see if we can get it out so uh, like two videos ago I used this plastic spatula which was from my kitchen at the time uh, to go ahead and pry off some of the plastic side gills for when I was vinyl wrapping them black. Since I can't get this to budge, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this plastic spatula to actually pry the gasket uh, away from the top of the engine block and then see if I can break the uh, valve cover loose because this thing's just not coming apart and I feel like I need something to pry and I don't want to use metal so plastic works perfect so I'm going to use this and try to squeeze in between the gasket and or the valve cover the gasket and the engine block to try to get that to uh, break loose awesome so that seemed to break it loose let's see if we can pull and get this to come back up oh there we go Starting to come up. There we go. Alrighty. So there's the valve cover the gasket pulled up with it now that we've got the valve cover off and we cleaned up everything in here it's a good time 
for us to go in with the new valve cover. And we just gotta be super careful the way we do this. We gotta come in just high or just low enough to clear underneath these cables and these wires here. And we gotta come in and come down even. Because what we don't want to do is we don't want to have the gasket uh, roll and not get a nice tight seal on us um, because that will cause even more problems down the road. So what we need to do is we need to just be careful. It shouldn't be that hard. We just need to pay attention to what we're doing and we should be alright. Uh, so let's just get that started. It was giving me clearance issues there so go back in. Just be super careful. Let's try to line things up. Alrighty. I think we have it. I think it's in there good. I'm satisfied with that. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go through and just hand tighten all of these bolts. Um, I'm going to use a socket wrench, but I'm not going to go super tight on anything because uh, I just want to make sure that everything is down properly and seated. Uh, and then I'll come back through and I'll use the proper torque spec. So now that we got those in place, everything's kind of hand tightened down. We're going to go through and tighten everything down to a torque value. Um, the torque value I've seen for the N55 engine, uh, which I'm going to end up using here because I couldn't find exact values for the S55. Uh, so I'm going to use 8.5 newton meters, uh, which is about uh, 6 foot pounds of torque. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of use a star pattern to tightening all these down and putting a torque value on them. But once you do that, you should be good to go and we'll start connecting everything together. Alright, so now that we've got the valve cover all torqued down to spec, I think the next thing to get back into place here is the fuel rail, just because we've got some exposed lines here that want to get covered up as soon as possible. Uh, so we'll put the fuel rail on, and then we'll start doing spark plugs, we'll do some gapping and installation, and then we'll start putting everything back together. So we're on the home stretch. So for the spark plug gapping, the guys over at Boot Mode, I'll link down below where I got this information. The guys over at Boot Mode recommend going with these NGK uh, laser iridium plugs. So I went ahead and picked up a pack of six of those. What you want to do is gap these to 0 0.022 inches. And so for that, I have these... Uh, feeler gauges and I just go ahead and I find the 0 .022 and so if you can get it to fit snugly inside then you know that your spark plug is gapped properly it's a pretty tight fit so I'd say that one is gapped properly so I'm gonna go ahead and do this to all six plugs I'm not gonna repeat this and show everyone but this is essentially what you do spread them, set the gap, and then we'll install these. All right, so now that the uh, coil packs are all installed, at this point, it's just putting everything back together. Uh, so you saw the way I took it apart. I'm probably just gonna time lapse this, and then once everything's back together, then we'll uh, hook up the battery and start the car and see uh, if this fixed the problem.
So, uh, engine's on. It took a few times there to get started. I think that was mainly because of the fuel rails not having fuel in them. It took like probably five or six times. It's idling now. Everything seems okay. So, I think uh, the real test here is what we need to do is let this engine get up to temperature and see if the PCV valve is doing its thing now and that it's properly releasing the pressure out of the uh, crankcase. So just gonna let it warm up and we'll see if this fixes the issue. Hopefully we're there though. All right, so the engine's been warmed up now for probably uh, 10 or 15 minutes now and it sounds great. Uh, there's a slight weird little bit of an idle uh, at the beginning, but it, it kind of worked itself out and now it seems fine. Uh, so spark plugs are good. Uh, looks like the new valve cover was the fix. Uh, we're not having a vacuum leak anymore and not having that weird sound. So this is awesome news. So I think what I'm gonna do is just button up some of the last couple things. We need to put this uh, aluminum strut bar back into the engine bay. So I'm gonna quick do that and then go for a little drive and see kind of Get, get it to a, a little bit more of a stress test and see if we can expose anything that uh, might be wrong because that last thing I want to do is take this trip up to tail the dragon and have something break uh, along the way so update you in a little bit uh, on the drive and see what happens all right there we have it we just got back from a little bit of a shakedown drive brought my friend Kyle along for the ride we went around town and did a couple of pools let the engine warm up beforehand and had no issues with vacuum leaks so it's been perfect I was honestly about 99% sure that that was going to be the fix but I wasn't 100% sure uh, so I just got back from the drive and I am 100% sure now that the issue is gone and it most likely in fact was the PCV valve because now with the new valve cover up under there we have no issues with vacuum leak noises and the squealing has gone away once the temperature has gotten up uh, or once the engine has gotten up to, to temperature so I'm so excited that was a, a kind of a gamble I paid like $650 for that valve cover uh, and also while I was in there did the spark plugs but I didn't know really if it was going to be the fix or not so being that it was the fix I am excited uh, I saved myself quite a bit of money in labor and diagnostics from the dealership and doing a little bit of research online and so I think at this point we officially have the first S55 valve cover install tutorial video on YouTube and on the internet right now. Um, I can't find anybody with it uh, out there right now. If I did, I probably wouldn't be making this video. I would have just followed their video and learned how to do it myself through that. But this is a first. No one's done this yet so far. So if you watched and you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if this helped you out and you're able to do a valve cover job at your house by yourself uh, with the help of this video, let me know in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you were helped in any way by this video. I really appreciate it. Let's me know that you're engaged with the videos and that people are liking the M4 uh, content. Uh, more particularly, M4 guys and uh, just in general BMW guys out there, uh, the GX470 group is giving me a lot more love than the BMW group is. So. You know, if you're still interested in seeing more BMW videos, you got to start uh, watching the videos and, and liking them because the GX470 group is winning right now and I'm going to probably start catering a little bit more to the GX470 guys because they're all asking for very particular install videos and I'm not getting any requests from the M4, M3 kind of groups. So if you do have any install videos that you'd like to see, uh, let me know in the comments below. I personally think that it's about time to do... Uh, some metal charge pipes because these plastic ones are, are getting quite a bit of life on them and they've went through a lot of heat cycles in their existence uh, so I think I'd like to do that and I kind of am a little bit curious about going with a, a different aftermarket top mount intercooler uh, it'd be kind of nice to have an all metal intercooler and I see CSF has some and I also see VRSF uh, makes them as well so if you're interested in that let me know uh, if you have any particular questions about the install, uh, there may have been some things that I didn't quite detail everything out, um, but most of the important things I feel like I did a good job of explaining those details. But if for some reason you see something that if you're doing this yourself, 
you can hit me up through email at any time. I will answer everybody's questions. The GX470 guys know I'm always answering questions through emails to them and through Instagram. So if you're doing this, you have any questions, reach out to me on DM on Instagram or through awesomemotivelog at gmail.com and I will fill in on any details that I may have missed. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. And it looks like we're going to be going to Tail the Dragon in three days. So look forward to that trip, and we'll see you guys on the next one.